Hello and welcome to Flipping Through the Internet's number one Mad Magazine news, review, and interview channel. Today I'm going to be flipping through Mad Magazine number 429. But before I do, I want to do a friendly reminder to please hit like, hit subscribe, and share this channel out. Uh, I can't grow without your help, and I sure do appreciate it when you do do that. Also, leave a comment below if you have any suggestions on future videos or uh, any request issues. And on the topic of putting in a request for an issue, uh, this issue was requested uh, by Senior Fajown, um, a common commenter on my channel. Um, and how could I say no to him? If you want to check out his channel, he's right over here. Wait a second. He's got more subscribers than I do. Anyway, check out his channel. That just ruined my day, Fajon. Anyway, uh, <laughs> the, this is Mad Number 429, released May 2003 at a cost of $3.50, which is indeed cheap. I don't even know what to say about this cover. Uh, I mean, I kind of do like it. It is like it has its appeal. Um, but I mean, it, it's strange, right? It does, uh, uh, I mean, aside from the obvious things like the mad logo, it doesn't exactly fit into like the style of a mad cover, but I think I kind of like it for that reason. I like having Alfred's face blown up so large. Um, so yeah, I kind of like it, even though it's sort of a, sort of a strange looking one. Anyway, so this is uh, from 2003. This is post-color, post-advertisements. Um, I feel like, I, don't, I can't remember exactly if it came, if th those two things happened at the same time. I think first they transitioned to color, and then they started taking ads. Um, and, you know, I don't know that anybody was all that pleased about it. I am curious if there was the same amount of um, tumult in the letters department the first time there were ads in it. Uh, I saw in my last video there was a lot of uh, a lot of letters in the tomato and letters department all about the UPC code. So here we have uh, a Chow Young Fat, Chow Young Fat, and Sean William Scott vehicle bulletproof, bulletproof monk, to be exact. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, but that's like very timely, right? Those two were huge during that time. Uh, was Chow Yun Fat and Romeo and Juliet, or what was it? No, not Romeo and Juliet. It was something else. It was like Romeo Must Die. I forget what it was called. Anyway, he was in a lot of movies. Um, again, they don't have the vital features. I guess in a way, this is the vital features, right? So we have Cooper. We have, oh, I forget the name of this guy um, because I don't do these modern ones all that often. But this is the guy who did Melvin and Jenkins. Um, here is, uh, was, what is his name? Caldwell, John Caldwell. And this, I should know, but I don't. So I'm turning the page. Uh, <laughs> like, <laughs> got milk. Got milk commercials are the worst. Oh man, I can't stand that. It's so bizarre. Oh. So here we go. Uh, let's zoom in. Let's do a letter thing. I think I've talked about this before. Um, you know, it's just uh, not. It's just not all that funny in the later days. Um, but I'll tell you what the is fun. The Make a Dumb Wish Foundation. Uh, if th this is the my go-to uh, every single time. I have a wish for the Make a Dumb Wish Foundation. I would like to turn my own room into a mad subscription office. I would love it if you guys could send me all the necessary things needed to do my job. I require no pay, and I don't require a computer. Brian Gleaserson, Alberta, Canada. Bri, we have good news for you and bad news for you. The bad news is that we do not think your letter qualifies for the Make a Dumb Wish Foundation. 
for it is our belief that every mad reader should turn their bedroom into a satellite mad subscription office. So here's the good news. Even though your wish doesn't qualify for the dumb wish, we are providing you with 1,000 postpaid mad subscription cards. To get them, simply go to a magazine shop in your area and buy up all the mads. There will be two cards in every issue you purchase. Take these cards and hand them out to all of your friends and pester them incessantly until they subscribe to Matt. Then continue to pester them until they open up a Matt subscription office in their bedroom. Tell them that they can get the cards the same way you did. Welcome to the Matt organization. We're happy to have you on board. See you at the company picnic. Ed. Oh. <laughs> You know, they didn't have enough of that. That's why Mad is uh, going out of business, right? Too few subscriptions. Um, which, I don't know. I think I need to do a video about that soon. But maybe by the time you've read this, I've already done it. Uh, the Big Easel. Just beautiful artwork. This is fun, too. I, I always liked uh, when they would feature the letters that people drew. Because, um, I mean, like you would get some that were like works of art, just these beautiful um, pictures on the letters, um, as well as like, you know, the pumpkins around Halloween and stuff like that. I always enjoy this. I think that's, I think it's pretty fun. Um, oh my gosh, the, the ads are incessant every single page. Um, and we're still doing the letters. <laughs> it's still the letters department. What is going on? Uh, there's a nice picture of everybody at work. Oh, look at the SpongeBob crap book. Um, what? Well, so so cartoons inexplicably hot. SpongeBob SquarePants. Well crafted, subversive, and funny. It's not SpongeBob SquarePants. So why is Matt Stupin to showcase the swill? It's simple. We've got seven pages to fill. Artist. Gary Hallgren, writer Jeff Cruz. Is this is this a picture of like Al Jaffe or somebody? <laughs> it's like just photoshopped with a tooth missing. SpongeBob SquarePants pre-stardom acting gigs in Rocky Five. Oh, <laughs> oh man, with uh, Tommy Guns, the the worst. Rocky movie ever made, Tommy Guns. If you haven't seen Rocky V, you are in for a treat. It has a Johnny Cochran stand-in. And I actually, I think the man who played Johnny Cochran in Seinfeld. Um, but Tommy Guns is being trained by uh, Rocky. He ends up having um, getting in a street fight with Rocky Balboa. A street fight. And then uh, Rocky Balboa gets his, he gets whooped by him. But then, of course, Rocky gets up one last time and he says, Hey, yo, Tommy, one more round. And you can, uh, you can guess what happens after that. He gets the one more round. My second run in, my second run in was Pretty Boy George. And again, I was forced to quit. There was no way I was going to let them use me to clean up after Clooney got seasick. Yeah, so I don't know, all the movies that he appeared in before he, he made it to stardom, which is, I don't know. Um, <laughs> it's hard. It's hard to get seven pages of SpongeBob material. Oh, I guess I didn't realize this is, um, this is all different. All right, so it's all new SpongeBob SquarePants characters for the upcoming season. We got SpongeBob Hot Pants, Morty Mandible, Barnacle Bunch. Parasite Pete. I love that. <laughs> it's coming right out of his butthole. Um, then the priest started him acting. M. Night Shyamalan's proposal for the SpongeBob movie. Um, you know, uh, Drew Friedman. The highly talented Drew Friedman. I should have been able to identify that. Writer Ari Kaplan and Scott Sunborn. SpongeBob's everywhere. SpongeBob Barker, SpongeBobby Knight, SpongeBob Costas. Okay, so you get the joke, right? Oh, Moto GP3. Um, 
Matt deconstructs TV talk shows. Um, this is, uh, yeah, here we go. Meha, Herman Meha. Um, I love this dude's style so much. I should see. I got to track this guy down because I would love to talk to him. Uh, writer Desmond Devlin. So we have uh, the TV talk shows. This month is Jerry Springer at 11. The audience lustily chants, Jerry, Jerry, Jerry. The constant repetition helps to remind them where they are. <laughs> but you get these like really cool faces. Like he does this. It's almost like individual fisheye lenses. They're just distorted in such a cool way. Um, I love it. I absolutely love it. Um, the red brick wall, the bad improv, the tired premise, the hooting audience. All that's missing are the dry 895 chicken wings. And you've got yourself another hellhole comedy club. Um, the show gets to the nitty gritty. The big revelation. If the guest doesn't have a big revelation of their own, they are provided with one from the producer's checklist. I'm a sex change operation addict. I'm doing the nasty with your brother. I'm hooking at the old age home. <laughs> I stole these breast implants from my stepmom. I'm the hottest dominatrix in the fifth grade. <laughs> oh my gosh. Desmond, you are a, you are a master. Right about now, at 11.31, right about now, non-medicated viewers noticed that the Nazi skinhead on today's Springer show was the deadbeat dad on last Thursday's Maury and the amateur male stripper on Ricky Lake. <laughs> oh, I love that. Herman Meha is, uh, yeah, just a fantastic guy. He does this cool thing. Um, I, you can see it. It's like revealed here. So he uses like watercolors or something. But he he breaks apart like uh, you get these like just very neat shaded shapes uh, that I don't know. It's like it's real. It's so realistic. But it's all you know what it's kind of like. It almost reminds me of how some artists will draw uh, Bizarro Superman. It's almost maybe that's why I like it is it is sort of like a bizarro caricature. Yeah, this dude's awesome. And look, he does these neat techniques in the background for watercolors, right? Like uh, kind of oversaturating it there. Oh, uh, wrong direction. Oh, Transformers season two, part two. A mad look at home improvement. So this is before they started coloring um, Aragones' work. And I have to say, I just, I don't know what it is about his his stuff. I don't think that color adds too much to it. I think that when he needs to, he does that cool thing with shading the background where he'll like wash everything out. Um, but yeah, I think it's, uh, I think it's great. Really, I mean, it's uh, it's just perfect the way it is. I can't, I can't read this one because it's too triggering for me. Um, like for instance, look at, all right, this guy, look at, here I am. This is me. See, this is I'm reacting to this. This is me feeling very confident. Yes, five gallons, sir. Look at, boom. This is why, this is, this exact thing I believe has happened to me. Let's look at, um, let's look at this six panel one. Got the squeaky floor, but there's mice. No, it's a floorboard, you dolt. That's what he says. He's like, I'm gonna go fix it. <laughs> I love it. I love how he just, he comes up with that just sort of like blank expression and then returns with mouse traps. It's just beautiful. He's just hoping. That's what I imagine when I see that. He's like, I hope she doesn't notice. I hope she doesn't notice that I'm coming back up. In the last few years, it seems like everything around us has become sponsored by corporations. 
There's nothing as exciting as going to the Staples Center box office to pick up tickets for the Jeep Music Festival, unless you're taking in a ball game at ball game at Tropicana Field. Pretty soon we won't be able to go anywhere that doesn't have a corporate handle for that faithful day. Fateful day. Here's Mad's handy guide to let you know when corporate naming gets out of control. The Grand Canyon becomes Gap National Recreation Area. That's a little gap right there everywhere. When the Washington Monument becomes Viagra Tower. It's a little too on the nose. Sorry. Uh, writer Jacob Lambert. Um, so they don't... Uh, yeah, I guess... Uh, I don't know. Maybe the art department put this... Uh, they they just have like stock photos basically, and then uh, you know I guess art department laid all that out. Mount Rushmore becomes Head and Shoulders National Park. Oh, the intrepid Sea Air Space Museum becomes Old Navy Aircraft Carrier. Auto Modelista. Oh, this is an ad. What am I doing? This actually looks kind of fun. As PlayStation 2. Yeah, look at it. I kind of like that. I like the style of how that looks. I think you guys know how I feel about Monroe. Uh, it's one of the greatest things. Oh, my gosh. So I just, by the time you're seeing this, I have also done a video on um, Duo Shade, on Craft Tint. Duo Tone, Single Tone, all of that. And here we have... I'm some great examples of it. I'm, I wonder, I don't think this was done digitally, right? Would Bill Ray be doing this digitally? I mean, it does, like you don't really see brushy marks. Huh. But here you have it, like you have the single tone, double tone, um, double tone there, single tone there. And it, it, it really, really works on this. Um, I think that sort of like mixed between the old and new styles is just, um, is absolutely beautiful. Um, having like modern artists using the, the older techniques like that single tone and double tone, it does look beautiful. But look at how sharp that line is. Yeah, I'm curious. I really want to know if he, if he used... The, the real deal, or if it was some sort of uh, recreation of it. I mean, this is one of those where it'd be like, it would be fun to read through this, but probably not for you. Probably not that much fun for you to watch. Oh, here we go. Who's this dude? This dude's in everything. He's in Sonic. He's in... X-Men? Mads genetically altered outtakes from X2. But wait, there's more. Order Uncanny X-Men Pasta Pot and you'll receive this set of lifetime guaranteed kitchen knives. Greg Liepman. Um, I, I gotta say, I cannot imagine that Greg Liepman said, hey, I, want, <laughs> I got an idea for photo captions. I'm gonna do photo captions for X2. I think probably what happened is editorial said, hey, let's do this. We're getting paid by, uh, you know, I don't know, Fox. Some beautiful John Caldwell art. Dating is hard. It is. And nothing is harder than that first date. The self-consciousness, the clumsy gestures, the awkward silence. And it only gets worse after you arrive at her house. Sure, that first night out is a rough start, but the longest journey begins with the first step, and hopefully you'll be able to avoid stepping in something foul if you read Matt's field-tested tips for your first date. These will be fun. So, if your date's a proponent of piercing, a refrigerator, ma <laughs> a refrigerator magnet strategically hidden in your muff can make for an interesting prolonged good night kiss <laughs> oh my gosh as far as men men's room graffiti is concerned it's a good idea to wait until your date is actually over before 
committing your words to plaster. Amy Vazolas orders chicken tetracy. <laughs> Max Corn. <laughs> During the course of the evening, never begins a sentence with, in the immortal words of Joey Buttafuoco, you got a world class rack there. <laughs> Yeah, that joke really only works if you know who Joey Buttafuoco is. Uh, well, no, I guess it works either way, right? Um, realize that a first date is a getting acquainted period. Period. It's way too early for any kind of commitment that would include, by the way, getting ass tattoos of each other's names. <laughs> ass tattoos. I don't know that I know anybody with an ass tattoo. I did see. Oh my gosh, I saw the most. <sighs> uh, I saw the. I can't even talk about this tattoo I saw at Goodwill. It was out of control. Spy versus Spy versus Spy by Peter Cooper. Look at these. Look at these guys. Just falling over her, right? Jeez Louise. Masterfully, she drops her kerchief. Oh, they bonked noggins. <laughs> they're, they're fighting each other just to get to her. And what happens? Oh, it's glued to their hand? Well, this is not good. <laughs> I mean, I do, I like this in the sense that you know, they weren't, like, uh, shredded by a propeller or something, right? Uh, it's like, <laughs> I can't believe I'm going to say this, but like, two arms that reach out and grab handkerchiefs, isn't that a bit far-fetched? I know, I know how that sounds, all right? The Justice League. Wonderful. Things that you'll probably read in the review of the video game your parents just gave you. Look at this collage. I kind of like that. Who did this? Artist, Tom Nick Kokostas. John, John Caldwell, the writer. For her latest mission, Lara Croft dons a traditional burqa. And by level three, the yodeling may prove too intense for younger gamers. <laughs> After 20 minutes of play, you'll believe you really are one of the three tenors. <laughs> oh my gosh, what was that? There's like a video game donkey video where it's like him just having clips of people saying like, you'll, you really feel like you're Spider-Man. The only Jared from Subway game on the market. Rated one of the top ten Gilmore Girls themed games by Teen People magazine. Not compatible with PS2, Xbox, GameCube, N64, Game Boy Advance, Sega Dreamcast. Who is this guy? Kevin Pope. That's who. That's who it is. Kevin Pope. <laughs> hope has a uh, wonderful style. Uh, Matt's 2003 Spring Break course selections. Um, I got to go right here. Principles of journalism. Many of the five W's are studied when coeds wake up in an unfamiliar room. Look at the naked frat boy passed out across their legs and ask, Who? What? Where? When and why? <laughs> it's this. This is what I love. Uh, here we have sociological studies in deviant behavior, examining the thought process by which it's considered fun or cool to stand on a six inch square spot under a blistering sun for 11 hours to keep your place all for the rich reward of spotting an MTV VJ who will be fired in the next three months. And this is uh, this is some 
Tom Bunk level of uh, sort of like disgusting illustration. Basic geometry. <laughs> God, this is what it feels like to barf. You captured the the feeling perfectly. Look at your eyes and their their tears and the no. Anyway, a parabola is the locus of a point moving in a plane such that its distances from a fixed point or focus and from a fixed straight line or directrix are equal. For a memorable demonstration of this dynamic, students chase undercooked buffalo wings and dollar beers with half a dozen rum shots. Oh, that's lovely. Oh, advanced theory of finance. After their wallet, luggage, and ride home disappear, students need to decide how many of their eight pints of blood they can afford to sell in order to get back home to Minneapolis. That's where I'm from. I'm from Minneapolis. <laughs> oh, this is disgusting. That's so disgusting. Uh, <laughs> the Romance language is Greek. A survey of some of the important Greek words students will become familiar with during their trip include chlamydia, gonorrhea, and herpes. <laughs> oh my god. Sure bets in Las Vegas. Daniel Artist, Daniel Gadera, writer Scott Mako. It's a sure bet in Vegas that you'll spend more time waiting in line for the buffet than you actually will dining. Hmm, I don't know. Is this an ad? Uh, yeah, it is. Uh, from Scholastic. Uh, this <laughs> like, what? Uh, the day my butt went psycho based on a true story. Okay, I might have to look that up. Here we have, this is, uh, whoa, this is interesting. Okay, so Bob Julian. Um, it feels like Bob Julian after Mort Drucco. Written by Dick DiBartolo. Tolo. Tonal rendering by Wildstorm. That's, uh, that's very interesting. Tonal rendering. I mean, yeah, that's weird. What does that mean? I guess maybe the shading, right? Because it's... Uh, yeah, that's the only thing I could think of, right? Anyway, uh, 24 viewers. There was this show, uh, if you didn't know, called 24. And I think the premise was the entire season occurs over a 24-hour period. So the entire season you'll have this countdown clock and, um, you know, Donald Sutherland's son um, has to solve a mystery or something. I don't know. I have no idea. Um, I never watched the show in my life. Ooh, Golden Sun. I played this game. That was a dope game. Here we have a mad fold. In. And as you can see, this was one from my personal collection as a child. There's my home address when I was a child. And it is not folded. Why is it not folded? Because I'm not a psycho. That's why. But this one is beautiful, I bet. Um, amoral foreigners often denigrate our American ideology. Some would like to seize control just to hurt people lately. One guy's crude simply... One guy's grudge simply involves nasty threats. Such uncommon conduct proves that he doesn't wish anyone well. I think it's Simon Cowell. Simon Cowell, American Idol. And here we have, instead of a beautiful back page uh, cover, we have some advertisements for a game that was probably garbage. Um, anyway, this was flipping Through Mad Number 429. Uh, if you have any suggestions, please leave them below in the comments. As always, please hit like, subscribe, and share this video out. I would very, very much appreciate it. And with that, toodaloo.